morning. How's everyone doing today? Uh, adjust the microphone here. Um, trying out something new. Um, broadcasting live on YouTube for the first time. Um, at least I am hoping I'm broadcasting live on YouTube. Uh, I am going to double check the streams and make sure because this is the first time I've tried it. Um, we'll see if it's actually working. Uh, YouTube slash marketing. Um, so the goal here, uh, for those of you that are new with the show, um, yeah, so we're going live. Fantastic. This, those of you who are new with the show is really um, just to uh, get some ideas or uh, talk through the ideas of what I'm working on today. So um, part of my job, um, I'm the Vice President of Cloud Research at Trend Micro, um, and part of my job is basically to stay tuned to everything that's going on today, um, but really look three to five years out and see where things are going. And that's a really um, fortunate position for me. I'm very grateful for it in that I get to kind of just experience everything and kind of step back and think about a lot of different things. Um, and for the last little while, this is episode 22, I think, um, of the show where uh, I take a few minutes in the morning, bro I was broadcasting out on Facebook, but now I'll be doing it here on my site, markNCA uh, slash uh, MWM, Mornings with Mark, or on YouTube, um, to just kind of share what I've been tackling or what I've been thinking about um, uh, later in the day yesterday and then kind of setting up for today with the goal goal, hopefully, of being able to do something more with it. So as opposed to just an idea that I'm sharing here, um, pushing forward uh, with something a little more substantial. So whether that's a post on Medium or a more formal video like the ones you've seen here on YouTube um, or, uh, you know, maybe some code or something else. So it's a really just a, a way to hash out some ideas. Um, it's been working out really well so far. Um, if you have questions, comments, concerns, you can talk to me uh, in the comments below or hit me up on social uh, at MarkNCA. Um, it's really about driving discussion and uh, sharing uh, approaches and perspectives. So the last few days, um, we've been talking about Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. Um, this thing is just gaining more steam, um, which, you know, it sounds bad, but it's actually a really, really good thing. For the longest time, privacy advocates have been saying, hey, um, there's a major issue with social networks here. You know, if you're not paying for it, you are the product. I mean, people kind of went, yeah, 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 whatever. But, um, you know, I get to get uh, good recipes. I get to talk to my friends. I get to take funky quizzes. Um, you know, Facebook gives me far more than it takes for me. And I think that was really um, primarily true simply because people didn't see the cost. It was a very hidden cost. And unfortunately, that's very true with privacy in general, is that privacy tends to be a very hidden cost. Um, and this is the first time where people have seen um, not quite a tangible, but a semi-tangible um, result. So the impact of the, in the United States around um, uh, perception leading up to the elections and whether it was effective or not, the fact that it's called that um, process into question um, is important in and of itself. Um, so there's been a huge backlash and finally Mark Zuckerberg came out last night and did an interview with CNN and it was what you would expect. It was a bunch of platitudes. Um, in Facebook's defense, they have fixed the technical gaps behind um, this, uh, this issue with um, Cambridge Analytica. But realistically, this is the core of their business. The core of their business is to, to create profiles to then sell to advertisers. You would be amazingly naive to think that there are not other uses for profiling populations at scale beyond advertising. Um, now, advertising itself is, is a huge challenge. It's something that's very frustrating. You know, um, a lot of people don't realize the depth at which we're tracked online simply to push product towards us. Um, you know, and in this case of the election meddling or propaganda at scale, that product is an idea as opposed to buy this thing. Um, you know, the easy example is if you're not using an ad blocker, if you're not using um, any anti-tracking software or plug-in for your browser, go search for something on uh, like Amazon, um, you know, something different or unique, um, and then watch how many ads follow you around the internet for that kind of thing. It's not random. It's not happenstance that you search for, um, you know, a new dress shirt or a new set of speakers or a fitness device, and then all of a sudden that's what's popping up in the ads um, as you go across the internet. That is a system that works in the background um, that is driving a profile of you based on your habits in order to push more product to you where they feel that you would be susceptible to buying it. Um, same principles have been in play here with the election meddling um, and you know it's 
it's questionable whether even election meddling is the right term. Um, it's simply pushing an idea out to the populace um, who needs to be far more cynical. Um, the uh, whistleblower for Cambridge Analytica, um, despite the public appearance, had some really good statements, um, you know, in that he said, uh, you know, when he posed the question of, you know, do you trust anyone? And he said, it's not that I don't trust anybody, though, of course, you know, you don't. Um, it's a question of, you know, going around the internet with a healthy dose of skepticism. And I think we need to equip ourselves, we need to equip um, our uh, populations, our communities with the tools to um, interpret information uh, based on a number of factors. Just because uh, you have a ton of viewers or a ton of followers or a ton of likes doesn't make the information valid. Um, there needs to be some level of standard and rigor. And that's a huge challenge because, um, you know, this is not just a um, one country issue. This is a global issue. This is, um, you know, we are finally pushing into that area that we've been talking about in sci-fi and fan, um, for a long time as far as the internet enabling sort of a borderless society. Well, the challenge of the borderless society is when you try to get up, uh, you know, 2.2 billion people in Facebook's case, those 2.2 billion people have very different perspectives, excuse me, uh, very different perspectives and very different views on a number of issues. Um, so if you're looking and saying, you know, fake news, um, what does that mean? Does that mean news that is um, demonstrably false? Or is that an opinion that does not um, lead with a specific community? There's a really, there's a ton of issues here. Um, you know, community standards don't really scale. Um, but giving people tools to ability to, uh, to interpret um, or to filter um, themselves uh, are, is part of the answer, but that also creates its own problems because now you live in a filter bubble. Um, what the heck does this have to do with security and privacy? Um, I think it has everything to do with security and privacy. So security's goal is to make sure that a system works as intended and only as intended. Um, these types of um, unintended consequences uh, fly in the face of a secure system, um, or at least a system that is whole, um, because this system in this case has been gamed by a number of actors that run counter to the primary country of origin of this network. Um, and from a privacy perspective, I think that's obvious. You know, we give up a lot of our privacy willingly, um, even if we aren't explicitly making that, um, that uh, trade-off, right? You're making it whether you know it or not. So lots to think about there. Um, today, I, it looks like I'm going to be tackling, um, I've got an idea sort of bubbling and percolating based on this stuff um, from the um, resignation, not resignation, sidelining of Alex Stamos at Facebook. He was a CSO. Um, he's been sort of removed from day-to-day -day duties. Um, I think um, that for me really is sort of the stamp, sort of the foot down of um, some of the work I did around organizational design and whether or not um, the CSO and that entire structure that we've built up around security is actually effective or not. Can it actually do the job we're asking it? I don't think it can. Um, I'm going to probably write that up into a little more formal of an essay and probably pop that up onto uh, Medium. It also leads to some of the stuff I'm getting ready for RSA um, mid-April. Um, I'll be down there. I'm on the program committee for a Ransomware and Destructive Attack Summit on the Monday. I'm also one of the social ambassadors for the conference, so I'll be um, talking a lot and blogging about and streaming live for the conference, uh, but also putting some stuff up on the Trend Micro um, blog property, so blog.trendmicro.com, um, to talk about the shortage in cybersecurity. And again, that's another thing that's sort of tangent to this. Do we really have a, as big a shortage as we think? Or are we simply going about the problem the wrong way? If something doesn't scale in an application, you wouldn't just keep hammering and saying, well, we just need to keep scaling the way we were. You would look and refactor. I think we need to refactor um, not just the CSO, but the organization underneath it. So that's really the topic of the day. Uh, what do you think? Let me know in the comments here below uh, in YouTube on the stream. Uh, first day doing the stream here. So I will be doing what I normally do is kind of package this up, put some uh, graphics before and after, um, and then post it as a normal thing. Um, down below here on uh, markn.ca, um, you'll see the past episodes by week. Every week I put up a post of, of what I talked about on the stream. Um, and I'll push this out on my other social channels. So on Facebook, you'll still be getting this, but not live. Um, and uh, there you go. So a bit of an experiment today. Hopefully this worked. I'm watching it kind of in the background with a bit of a delay. So it is streaming on my site, which is cool. Um, but yeah, there we go. Mornings with Mark. Thanks for tuning in on this new channel. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, hit me up online at MarkNCA on all the major socials um, or down below in the comments. Have a great day. We'll talk to you soon.